Hello ladies and gentlemen, and today we're going to be doing a first for this channel. We're going to talk for a while about a film we've seen. Well, in my ca in this case, me and Pedro, because we're the only ones here and the only ones that have seen the song yeah. I'm going to talk about. It's Jupiter Ascending, the latest offering from the Wachowskis. It's, it's, an, it's good that we get to do this because uh, I get to voice my thoughts. Because honestly, I think this movie is getting a, a little too much flack. I mean... Uh, People are treating this as if it's like the one of the worst movies out there right now, and I'm like, what, seriously? I wouldn't say it's as bad as Ballistic. <laughs> like, when you boil down, basically my basic uh, overall thoughts is that, uh, I'll go into specific scenes uh, eventually, but for now I'll just start out by saying basically, it's a, an incredibly bland movie with the most one of the most generic plots ever. But honestly, like it's it's reasonably well paced. It's um, like uh, the like it, the characters aren't annoying, you know. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's just it, it, it's basically a movie that goes through the motions. I mean, it's not even that boring. To, at least to me, it wasn't. I, I know I know you thought it was boring, but honestly, yeah. I, mostly I was just watching and just you know, okay, now this happens, now this happens, now this happens. It yeah. just, uh, I, I, it was, it, I, I'd give this a solid 40 or 50 in, in terms of Rotten Tomato <laughs> score. I mean, 23, in my opinion, is a huge, huge exaggeration. Well, by the time it got to the halfway point of this film, I was so bored, I was really looking forward to watching Big Hero 6. Because <laughs> um, what I did was, um, I had a two-in-one day. I went to see this film with a friend of mine. Who decided this film was interesting, but not Big Hero Six? Right. Um, again, again, opinions, but I didn't really understand it myself. Uh, anyway, before we get into specifics, um, how about we go a little bit into you know our history with the Wachowskis? Um, of course. My history with them only goes to the Matrix films and Speed Racer. I haven't seen anything else. Well, aside from this film, obviously. Uh, man, what if? How, how how sad the Wachowskis had a pretty good start and then and then Matrix Reloaded came out and that kind of sucked and then Revolutions came out and that sucked even more and then Speed Racer nearly gave me a migraine <laughs> I didn't see Cloud Atlas I've got it on Blu-ray now but I still haven't seen it yet and then there's this film <laughs> I can't wait to hear your thoughts on Cloud Atlas because I, I, I like uh, knowing you how I do like I'm pretty sure you're not you're gonna hate the, the way it's structured <laughs> The length is kind of scaring me already. Oh, like three, oh, yeah, <laughs> and you it's should. Three hours long, and and it's the most pointless three hours you will ever. Exp well, aside from other like, like aside from Aaron Kruger scripts and you know other shit like that, it's one, basically it's one of the most pointless three hour movies you will ever see. <laughs> and also, and also, I'm looking at the box office. I know it's only been out like a, a couple of. It's, it's been out a couple of days. It's got it's it's made fifty one and a half million against a hundred and seventy six million dollar budget. Do you think it's gonna make that budget or? Well, not? the movie was released pretty much worldwide on, on the exact same day. Like it, it's not like one of the, it's not like a Disney movie where it releases in America first and then it goes country by country. Eventually, Japan gets it last, or even England. It's uh, uh th it was pretty much a worldwide launch. Uh, and uh, it, so yeah, the the movie's already out in pretty much most of the world. So, and if they're all, if they only got that, I'm pretty sure the, the movie will probably just pay for itself and then just vanish into nothing. Uh, well, as for my story with the Wachowskis, basically, yeah. I, I never saw Bound. I've heard it's. A, I, I've heard I've heard that it's apparently uh, one of their way better than. Anything they've made past uh, past uh, that, uh, aside from maybe V for Vendetta, maybe. I mean, basically, what I've been hearing is that Bound and V for Vendetta are their best movies. But I haven't, I still haven't gotten around to seeing Bound, so I can speak for that. Uh, but yeah, like most people, I got in, first got introduced to the Wachowskis for the first Matrix movie. Went back when it came, I actually went to see it in the theaters in night back in 1999. Uh, and like most people, I was blown away by the visuals. I've never, I had never seen a movie with this visual style in my life so that alone made it memorable i'll give it that uh but of course but the, the the sad uh, what ruined it for me was of course the aside from the bad aside from the the shallow characters and of course the not that very interesting philosophical discussions i hated the ending i hated 
um, the, the, the I hated the cheesy way they tried to like. Uh, there's so many stupid things about that movie, but I won't go in in a rant about it. The point also, is, the, the acting wasn't that great, yeah. except from Hugo Weaving and Joe Pantoliano, and I think Lawrence Fishburne was a little bit. Um, yeah. it, which was it, fine as well. Yeah, it also didn't um, help that I already watched Ghost in the Shell by that point. So, yeah. and but Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss's performance, considering the the two big main characters of the film, yeah. I mean, I still enjoy watching the film, but um, yeah, I, I will say it is really starting to show its age. So people thought, wow, the Wachowskis are really onto something. <laughs> and then Reloaded came out. Yeah, Reloaded came out and it's uh, it's an all over the place uh, movie. But uh, like Doug Walker said in his review, I do kind of appreciate the fact that they went a little more over the top with it and it, it made it a little more riffable. The six um, billion Hugo Weavings. <laughs> so, yeah, Reloaded was even probably even stupider it was all over the place it's it, like any possible um uh, attempt at being somewhat substantial was completely thrown in the garbage <laughs> and then yeah came, and then of course came revolutions which well i don't really have to talk about revolutions do i <laughs> uh well you will do when we get to a commentary of it well yeah. and yeah and it's my pick for... I know Pedro has an entirely different pick, but it's my pick for the absolute worst ending in anything ever because what was accomplished? The only real reason you say that is because you haven't seen the ending to Lightning Returns. But but oh well, we'll if, that's a story for another day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, awful, god-awful ending. It's fucking stupid. Nothing got uh, accomplished. And, pretty and much. Wasn't that wasn't the point to try and get rid of the machines so they could, you know live a happy life but they're still there what bothers me is that okay so so the machine so the so neo helped the machines uh clean the matrix up from the from the smith virus okay yeah. fine <laughs> okay so what's stopping the machines from going back on their deal and uh you know so uh, you really so, 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 so the machines that try to kill you earlier so 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 you made them pinky swear and apparently the machines have this honor code so they're gonna abide by it like this what Anyway, yeah, Revolutions, yeah, it's fucking stupid. Beat for Vendetta, it's my favorite Wachowski's film. Again, I haven't seen Bound yet, but that, so that yeah, can still well, change. It, it wasn't directed by them. It was, it was, it was, instead, they picked their first assistant director, James McTeague, to direct it. Yeah, but it's like, but, but, but even if it, they didn't direct it, like, it, 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 the movie itself screams Wachowski's. It's, I mean, the, I mean the, there's Ugo Weaving's there. The, the the way the dialogue is written, like it's clearly a Wachowski's film. Yes, and then we got Rainbow the movie. Uh, sorry, uh, Speed Racer. Speed Racer. The, the sad thing is that when I first heard the Wachowskis were making uh, an, a live action Speed Racer, I thought, it, I mean, if they could maybe do the over top sh uh, shit action that they've done <laughs> in Reloaded, it could maybe work. But no, they just. Instead, they made the drug hallucination. Like, yeah, and and okay, I, it didn't really make me sick looking at the film, but I've heard a lot of people it gave them migraines, and it's no a, wonder the one no wonder it bombed. It's horrible. It's, it's just, a health risk. It's it, I mean, it's incredibly campy, and the only great thing about it is the music by Michael G. G I can never pronounce Ma Michael Giacchino. Giacchino, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, the the thing is, yeah, um, he uh, the, the the movie it was trying to go for you know cheesiness and campiness like the original cartoon, but the but the, the what made the original cartoons so bad it was funny was the fact that the cheesiness was unintentional, you know, and here they're trying to force that magic, and you you can't just force that, you know. And apparently Warner Brothers thought this was going to be their big summer blockbuster film, but. No, it bombed heavily, and that actually turned out to be The Dark Knight. I really don't understand why the Warner Bros. keeps throwing money at the Wachowskis. I mean, seriously. <laughs> this film bombed, and indeed their very next film bombed, um, Cloud Atlas. Cloud I, Atlas! I, I know Pedro loves this film so very much. I hate Cloud Atlas because it's one of the most pretentious pieces of nothing ever put on screen. Like, seriously. Uh, it's like this movie is about nothing. It's just 
random plot. It's basically taking five plots that are being told with the exact same actors, but they're playing different characters. And they tr and basically they're trying to do these loose connections between the, the plots, but it doesn't really factor into anything substantial. And basically, so and it's all basically to end the movie by saying, "Oh, basically, oh, everything is all connected. History repeats itself." In fact, I would like before we move on to the rest of Jupiter Ascending, I would like to quote this one thing, because here's an interesting thing about Cloud Atlas. The um, back when the movie was panned by, like, well, it wasn't panned, but it, it got mixed a mixed reception. Polar, it polarized critics, it says. Yeah, yeah, the critics who didn't like it, like the Wachowskis, actually responded. To the negative reviews, uh, and, and got, and it's, and, and it really shows how much these these. I mean, they're not on I mean, they're not on Shyamalan's level of you know arrogance, arrogance. But they're 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 walking towards that path because let me just. Well, and also um, we got an extra person to well in your your case, Adam. Again, I still haven't seen the film, but you've got an extra person to blame for Cloud Atlas because this film was. As well as the Wachowskis, it was directed and co-written by a guy named Tom Tykwer, who also um, co-composed co the music. Yeah. I have no clue who this guy is. Um, hold on, let me get up his films. Um, um, actually, no, there's, there's, there's too many to list, but um, I'll throw the Wikipedia link at you and you can read for yourself. So, um, anyway, that's so why, so, so what did he do? Um, okay, let's have a little look-see. Uh, Ron, Ron Lola, Lola Ron. Ron. Princess and the Warrior. Heaven, whatever that is. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Who cares? Okay, so basically, here's here's the what, what Andy Wachowski had to do. Uh, oh, by the way, here's an interesting thing, Webs. Uh, another thing, a common thing Wachowski's have in, with Shyamalan. In Cloud Atlas, we have a scene where they flat out throw a critic off the... the off a window and then we see him falling into his doom basically classy. yeah it's classy classy Wachowski's okay so um Andy okay so Andy Wachowski reply uh, basically I, I remember the exact line from the movie what is a critic but someone who reads without uh pondering uh and qu who reads quickly and without pondering what he just witnessed yeah right but basically, you just didn't, you, just, you just don't get us. That's basically what we get from this. Okay, so so Andy Wachowski stated, as soon as the critics encounter a piece of art they don't fully understand the first time going through it, they think it's the fault of the movie or the work of art. They think it's a mess. This doesn't make any sense, and they reject it just out of an almost knee-jerk response to some ambiguity or some gulf between what they expect they should be able to understand and what they understand. Okay, Andy, so you're talking like a you're talking like a Matrix character. It's Andy. It's Andy Wachowski. <laughs> but yeah, the, what? The, it's just like uh, okay, Andy. You are creating the art. You have to convey what the art is to me. Okay. In order for me to understand your art, you make you have to make it accessible to an audience. You can't. You you you. you so basically, what you're t okay. Actually, I'll just move on to the to Lana's comment. Because uh, her her comment leads into what I was about to say. Yeah, because um, in, in case the audience doesn't know, Larry Wachowski had a sex change sometime, I think in the late or late two thousands, early this decade. Yeah, and now she's Lana Wachowski. I, I, I got no problems with. Um, I don't really care with with sex changed um, people. But anyway, moving on. People will try to to will Cloud Atlas to be rejected. They will call it messy or complicated or undecided whether it's whether it's trying to say something new agey profound or not and we're wrestling with the same things that dickens and hugo and david mitchell and Herman melville were wrestling with these guys are actually comparing themselves to charles dickens really i, I just uh, okay um we're wrestling with those same ideas and we're just trying to do it in a more exciting context than conventionally you are allowed to we don't want to say we are making this to mean this. What we find is that the most interesting art is open to a spectrum of interpretation. So basically, so, so basically, they made the they completely and purposely engineered this movie to be literally deliberately uh, impossible to comprehend, and they flat out admit it. Like they, they, they just you you. So so basically, so because you're saying 
they know that they're not saying anything with that movie. You know, they're just they know <laughs> they know that if they make the most confusing shit, people will automatically assume that there must be something they're not getting and will automatically claim it as brilliant. Like it's you can't just throw yeah. shit into a movie and, and say that's brilliant and anyone who disagrees is just someone who doesn't get us. So Ugh. so it's kinda like no country for old men. Well, you know, know where where we have problems with it and people say you just didn't get it. Indeed. Anyway, but anyway, um, we've that's our um, mini um, Wachowski rant slash look back done. Let's get on to the topic at hand: Jupiter ascending. Indeed. So, uh, one specific scene, and of course, let's talk about the scene that the most infamous scene, probably the scene where they. I try, love dogs. Yeah, when well, the scene where they try to force a romance between Jupiter and uh, Kane. Um, basically, uh, but, okay, who's, uh, I, 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 maybe I should introduce the characters first a bit. Okay, Jupiter is the, our main character, she's played by Mila Kunis, and... She's Princess Peach in film form. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, she does absolutely nothing in this movie, she just gets rescued by people. I'm not even kidding. It's ironic title, Jupiter Ascending, yeah, more like Jupiter, I get kidnapped a lot, please help me. And that's pretty much Mila Kunis' career at this point, please help me. <laughs> so yeah Mila Kunis aka Jupiter she's a, a, a toilet cleaner you know it's, it's, uh, she spends her uh, sets her work basically she she listens from a Russian family her father was an ast an, um, an astrologist and he gave her the name Jupiter because Jupiter is uh, was his favorite planet or some shit like that okay basically uh, she turns out she's destined for greater things, because turns out she's the reincarnation of the <laughs> ancient queen from Jupiter. <laughs> However the hell that works. <laughs> yeah, um, one comparison people bring up a lot with this film is Phantom Menace. I mean, when you think about it, both films have the same plot. Pretty much, yeah. A bunch of people arguing about, um, well, in Star Wars, Phantom Menace's case, trade routes, and in this case, oh, I'll give only, it, I'll give it this. Planet. I'll give it this: the plot in this movie was at least more coherent than in *Phantom Menace*. At least, at, actually, at, I think I think the opposite. I think I thought the *Phantom Menace* was more coherent. Honestly, at least this movie didn't feel like it was all over the place. At least it felt like uh, it had a beginning, middle, and end. You know, uh, uh, it, 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 it. I mean, it's not like in *Phantom Menace* when we go into the Gungan city where nothing gets accomplished, and then we just completely drop that plot thread. Like. Ugh. Honestly, I've had more. I had more fun with that film than this one. But we'll, we'll get to we'll get to Phantom Menace at some point, maybe. Anyway, the point is, yeah, basically they try to force a romance between her and the the alien dude, who is apparently just a mook. Who's you know basically, he's basically he only exists. He only exists to save Mila Kunis, and he and credit to him, he does that very well, if only because he does it a lot. Basically, Mila Kunis starts flirting with him for absolutely no reason, even though they have no chemistry and there's no actual build-up to any of it. Oh, he's so hot. Pretty much, yeah. Okay, so, so he's all like, so, what do you think of me and shit like that? And then he's all like, no, I can't because I'm a, in this planet, I'm considered a dog. He, and she's like, I love dogs. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, really? Can, can you see the point that one critic made where he said it was dialogue something... The dialogue was something George Lucas would say. No, ew. <laughs> <laughs> I hate sand. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'll I'll take I hate sand. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I I will agree with you on that one. I hate sand. I mean, hell, at least that's um, that's somewhat normal. Sand can be irritating. I'm like, I love dogs. Well, well, yeah. Well, but anyway, I, um, yeah. yeah. Basically, it has forced romance. And that's one of the scenes that really became infamous between critics and audiences. Laughing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, how about the villain? <laughs> I love the The villain was the best part of the whole fucking uh, Eddie, movie. Eddie Redmayne, what the hell happened to you? You were getting... Oscar, nom you're getting award nominations for playing Stephen Hawking. Honestly, and I love. Then you put on a pretty god awful old voice and and start shouting for no random. Honestly, reason. I appreciate uh, his acting in this movie because he fe it felt like to me like you know it it, it felt like this he was the Mark Wahlberg of this movie. It felt like he knew that this was a sh piece of giant shit. And he was just doing this for the paycheck, so he decided to just have a blast with his role. And boy, <laughs> did he add the uh, like ah. Uh, do you please bring me the girl? 
I create life! <laughs> no! And then I can zoom in. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I've never really seen the performance like that before. Oh, trust me. Uh, this I don't think I have. It, it, it reminds me, it reminds me of Al Pacino in Godfather, like where he's talking. Oh, Godfather it, Part Three. No, 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 in the first movie where he's all like, all right. okay, you're like, going to my home, my home, <laughs> where my wife sleeps, where my kids sleep. Where they come <laughs> to play with their toys. <laughs> uh, well, at least we got someone carrying on Al Pacino's um, yeah. style of acting. It's just, and, uh, yeah. So yeah, I loved them. I loved every single minute he was on the screen because he was so fucking happy and it was so glorious. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what was this plot again? He wanted to liquidize humans. He, basically, he, I don't even he know. To liquidize humans for, for so a, he could make a elixir of life for a movie that has such a basic generic plot the actual story going around like is surprisingly convoluted i mean it's the wachowskis first it's the first it's the 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 sister wants her to you know be around and be the new queen and shit and then, then it's like no fuck that we're going somewhere else then we have the whole uh thing about you know her uh, uh, you know, oh, we can turn people into young. We have to buy time. Time is the time is the greatest um, asset we as, have. asset we have. When did this become? When did this become uh, 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 in time? Uh, I, I mean, that's a, that's a horrible movie, by the way. But um, back to yeah. Okay, then we get the other brother. The other brother wants to marry her because there so, was a wait. There was a there was a. Were both puppets played by the same guy? I, I don't even... No, they're... they're well, I, I've, got, I've got the cast list, at least. Um, hang on, let me try and... Uh... The brother... The younger brother wanted to basically... Oh, yeah, the, long, the other one was played by Douglas Booth, the younger one. So, yeah, basically, the sister told Mila Kunis that... Turn, oh, no, 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 don't worry. This thing that gives us all, um, more time is not at all uh, harming anyone. But then Terry her... Gilliam was in this film. Yeah, I heard. I don't know who he was playing, though. The seal and signet minister in a scene that's apparently a homage to Gilliam's Brazil. Oh. So wonderful. you, so he accepted a role for a film based on a film he directed. Pretty much, I guess. Anyway, yeah, so let me get this straight. Uh, the sister says that he does that it doesn't harm that the time thing doesn't harm humans but then the other brother tells oh it does actually they actually draw have to kill humans in order to get this oh but the, but don't you worry if you marry me and become and let me become kings we can assure the security of our subjects even though we never really established how the hell the subjects are in danger at all like <laughs> it, and and then and so basically so she accepts it because I don't even remember. Uh, she says it because whatever. My family's in danger or something. Yeah, I get. I don't even remember. The thing is, yeah. So the brother uh, tries to marry, but then Kane finds out it's all a ruse and tr saves her and all that shit. And then we meet, oh, so glorious Hemi brother, uh, and he's the one who actually tries to manages to get the closest to getting shit done by blackmailing her with, you know, her family's safety. And forcing her to abdicate. Okay, first of all, I'd like to mention something. So basically, that dude wanted to marry a reincarnation of his mother. That's kind of ew. Yeah. Wow, really? I, I, I didn't. I didn't. It didn't come off to me like that. But now that you mention it, yeah. That, well, they, they they flat out specify very clearly that she's a reincarnation of his mother, and yet he really? wants to I, marry. I forgot all about it. <laughs> and yet he wants to marry her. <laughs> God. Ugh. Um, again, um, did again. I know, I know. I keep bringing up Star Wars stuff, but um, did the prequels ever go for incest? No, we 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 had a virgin birth, but that's about it. No, I mean, hell, Lucas isn't that gross. <laughs> hell, I think I don't think if, I don't think there he's was gross. no it's just there was no father. Which I just woke up one day, I was pregnant with. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, how, how how inconvenient? How 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 um inconvenient? Oh shit! I'm pregnant. I just woke up. <laughs> anyway, back to um back to this one. So what we talk, we've, we've done the villain. We've done um the brothers. We've done the brothers. Um, what about the other brothers? Channing Tatum and Sean Bean. 
Uh, were they or were, or were they brothers? No, 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 they weren't brothers. They were just friends. Basically, yeah, friends Kane, that punch each other. Basically, Kane and whoever Sean Bean plays, I forgot his name. Stinger. I've got the name. Okay, Stinger, Stinger. Apini, apparently a Han Solo type character. Stinger. Uh, yeah, except how? Except Han Solo was charismatic. Okay. Anyway, yeah. I don't think that was any. I don't think it was Sean Bean's fault. He, he was trying. Oh no 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 no! Sean Bean, Sean Bean is a fine actor. It's not. In fact, most of the. In fact, I'll just get this out of the way right now. I'm not Spoilers, blaming. He doesn't die. I'm not blaming the actors at all for anything that goes wrong in this film because all these actors are, can do can do just fine. As, um, as long as they're in the movie that caters to their strengths. I mean... Yeah, um, I wasn't impressed with Mila Kunis in this film. Well, she has nothing to work with. She, she's done fine in the show Seventh Heaven. She uh, she was fine in Ted. She was, um, Family it, Guy? She, she also does a good job in Family Guy. She, she can do well as uh, she has a strong script. It's just that... I mean, let's face it. I mean... Yeah. Okay. So Channing Tatum. I mean, yeah. Usually he does really bad when he is in a serious role, but in this one, I wasn't particularly bothered by him in this one. Well, well, I mean, I hadn't really seen him in a serious role properly that wasn't a trailer. Um, and I'll be honest, he 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 was actually the least of this movie's um yeah definitely problems. I mean, I mean, yeah, he was fine-ish, and yeah, and. And if anything, has got me a little bit more optimistic for seeing him as Gambit next year. Nice. Um, Sean B. Yeah, so yeah, so the story with Stinger and Kane is that basically they're friends. They have they, no wings. They, no. They, they, they used to be servants, angels of whatever in Jupiter, but then one day they lost the wings in the war or some shit like that. I don't even remember. So basically, they're, they're that's why Sean Bean is better in any keeps the crap out of him for no reason uh and then we and then, but then at the end eventually they get because they helped everything um Mila Kunis uses our queen authority to give them wings back and shit like and, that and also um and also apparently Mila Kunis has the ability to attract bees yeah that's also apparently bees have the ability to recognize royalty However, the hell that uh, works. What is up with filmmakers b making bees to be like the most amazing animal on the planet? The happening, this movie, like the wick the Wicker Man. Yeah, the Wicker Man. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm. I was. I was. I was. Um. I was expecting a scene where she uses the bees to attack the aliens invading Earth, but. We never, we never, never got that. Yeah. Sadly, hell, the hell, it'd have been fun. I mean, because of how silly it would have been. Um, okay. Uh, what else is there? Um, uh, well, let's talk about. Okay, we've already pretty much talked about the, the story. Well, uh, just to finish the story, basically, Mila Kunis and Jenny Tenham uh, get together because the shock, the, the script says so, I guess. And then it, it ends with them having fun flying because. Why not? And she gets a telescope, which is, uh, I guess... It's, it's what I always wanted. Yay! We don't really get to know exactly why she wants it, but whatever. But yeah, the, the story is incredibly it, bland. And, and even and even with a story as cliche and tripe as this, you'd think they would at least be able to at least manage to, you know, not fuck up in terms of in the plot hole department, but they still manage to have pretty... Again, it's the Wachowskis. Yeah, indeed. But, uh, yeah, as for, okay, so character story, let's talk about, I guess, the, the more technical aspects of the movie. The, the, the best part of this movie is without a, like, uh, the best part of this movie, aside from uh, the villain, the is, is the score. Michael Giacchino's score is awesome. Like, uh, I really like, it did a really good job in, you know, being all pumping in the it action helped. scenes. Um, I really like the credits theme, by the way. I actually stuck around for the credits because I was really enjoying the music. Um, I just I, I was just so bored I left right away. <laughs> I I I, 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 was, I was I stuck around for some more of Michael Giacchino awesomeness. But um, I'm gonna see if I can try and find not not right now but maybe someday I'll see if I can find the soundtrack on iTunes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's it. Uh, the score was awesome, of course, but uh, some of the 
there's a couple of good action scenes, especially the um, yeah, the action is fine. The, the 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 overhead chase through Chicago. I don't find the action scenes as impressive as some critics are saying, but yeah, they're fine. They they work like they, yeah, they get the job done. Uh, as for the visual, uh, if there's one thing that the Wachowskis usually always tend to get right is well, except for Speed Racer. Is the the visual yeah. style of the movie yeah, because the visuals, this this time the visuals didn't make me want to hurl. The visual style of this movie is bland as all hell. Like seriously, but, but on a technical it, level, it was made well. A, a lot of times, it feels like it's trying to be um, like Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, in the, it's uh, I, I, just, I really don't. Now this this is this is hilarious. Um, they had the secret screening of this film at the Sundance Film Festival this year. Mm-hmm. It was invite only. And um, apparently, the theatre was half empty. Um, <laughs> a handful of people walked out during the movie. And once it finished, um, reactions were negative. Someone said, one person said the film, he hated the film for being just ridiculous. And um, apparently, someone even questioned why do you have it at Sundance? I, 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 honestly, it, 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 it's sad, you know, because uh, the, I wonder if the watch houses are going to try to get, get back out there and once again try to accuse people of just not getting them, even though there's absolutely nothing to get in this movie. Anybody can comprehend what the, this is one of the most, this is by far their most simple, straightforward film. And even a, then, it didn't really make any sense. A, a child can understand. A child can fucking understand what what this movie is all about. <laughs> and also, um, Titus. Gee, what an original name mm-hmm. for a character. I'm surprised they just call him Titus while they were at it. Yeah, that could be something you know. The, the Square Enix found that, and they're like, "You're using our characters' names in a shitty film." Um. What else? Oh yeah, I did kind of enjoy the 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 scene. That's a, a jab at bureaucracy and how slow it is. I guess. Um. When? What was that? When was that? Uh, you remember when they got to Jupiter and she had to fill in all the paperwork so that she could become a queen? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. The one we had to go. You had to go there. No, you had to go there. No, you got to yeah. go here. No, you got to spin the round and do the. Yeah, the, the actor. The, the, the actor playing their guy. You know, the guy with a half face, half yeah. robot. Uh, he felt like he was having fun playing his role, so uh, I liked him. Mm-hmm. Um. That's that's about it, though. Yeah. That, um, that was probably the most the most memorable scene in the movie. <laughs> For me, at least. Which, which is sad. A film, a film that's really the, the most memorable scene is where it's just a bunch of people going around different places is sad as compared to like an action scene or a big plot twist. I love how the poster says, for, still keep saying, for the, uh, for the creators of the Matrix trilogy, the Matrix trilogy hasn't been relevant in years. I'm pretty sure that's not going to attract people at all. Yeah, but they might as well have just said from the people that made you sick watching Speed Racer. <laughs> The mind they, are probably going to solve. Well, then again, that tagline isn't selling anyway. So they haven't made. They, they haven't made like. A, I, I, I'm wondering why they can't just say from the directors of V for Vendetta. I mean, then again, V for Vendetta well, is the, the writers of V for Vendetta more accurately. True. Okay, fine. From the directors, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like they only have the Matrix as far as directors. Uh, like the, I mean, Bound isn't popular, so yeah. Speed Racer bombed and made people sick. Cloud Atlas also bombed and just. I think either really excited people or really bored them to death. It, to me, like... Uh, it, or pissed it, them off. It, to me, it just pissed me off because of how much time I, I lost watching. Really? A three-hour movie for a, for a message that I can get out of a fortune cookie. Like... <laughs> they actually have fortune cookies in me nearby shopping center I can get for free. Well, there you go then. Go there, buy a fortune cookie. There you no, go. No, it's, it's for free even. Well, there you go. Go there, eat, uh, get a fortune cookie, get your fortune. There you go. That's about as interesting as Cloud Atlas is. Except yeah. it doesn't last three hours. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I can eat it, read it, and then just throw it in the bin because it's never going to happen. Exactly. So, yeah, is there anything else to talk about? Or Supporting is that cast member Douglas Booth has described the film's universe as a cross between The Matrix and Star Wars, while Kunis named its underlying themes as indulgence and consumption. What? <laughs> yeah, I, I lo- this is the common thing, you know. But when at- when what, at- in- when- what indulgence? What consumption? All I saw was people arguing no, no, about no, no, you the see planet Earth. You see, this, this is a common thing. Whenever a, an actor is in a shitty movie, 
they all and they're interviewed about it they always you know because they can't talk badly about the movie you know because <laughs> they want to get work you know but so yeah. they try to bullshit their way through the interview by saying by just making pulling stuff out of their ass like the um, I, I remember one interview with Natalie Portman about the prequels where she was all like uh, you know in, in Attack of the Clones where she's like talking about her character she's like she uh, struggles um, with the um, war versus uh, being in love and they're like so well she does struggle with being in love <laughs> so she was half right hey she was more accurate than the people talk about this film what what indulgence what consumption and how is this a cross between the matrix and star wars i didn't see any matrixy stuff and the well star there was wars some stuff was slow noticeable well there was some slow motion here and there oh uh, yeah god, god god damn it that that thing that style it needs to go. I enjoy watching it in The Matrix. I enjoy watching it in 300. But that's about it. Mm -hmm. I, I, Mission Impossible 2 abuse that to like no end. <laughs> it's like it's it's like in the second Matrix. In the Matrix world, the entire uh, the entire uh, freeway action scene is done in slow motion. <laughs> the whole film might as well have been in slow motion. Oh wait, it was. <laughs> Actually, anyway. it was one time slow motion, another time it was like zoom. Anyway, the Wachowski's direction, uh, it worked. Like, I mean, if there's one thing I still give the Wachowski, that they're good technical directors. Um, they're good at directing technical specs, but in terms of directing actors, oh, definitely no. Uh, they're horrible at directing actors, definitely. Yeah. Um, although I've heard the recent Left Behind films director Vic Armstrong, I heard he's actually worse. But we haven't seen Left Behind yet, so yeah. we can't speak for that. Well, when I say Left Behind, the recent one, not the one from 2000. Um, is there anything else to mention aside from... Mm, not that I can think this of. Movie, this movie is so shallow and simplistic, it can be described in so little time. Like, I'm, 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 I'm surprised people reviewing this on the on videos i'm surprised i can even okay, make actually, actually you still haven't brought up your okay fine okay uh, we already know that you found it kind of boring but uh yeah. do you think do you think the being completely thrashed by critics as like an abomination do you think that's accurate or do you or, or do you agree with me that it's an exaggeration um i won't say it's a complete exaggeration because it is a mess it is nothing makes any sense even though yeah it's supposed to be a simple film although i have seen I've seen worse from the Wachowski. I've seen, yeah, I've seen Matrix Revolutions. I've seen Speed Racer, you know, and and at least this film didn't either bore me to death with long exposition about you know purpose and all that, and yeah. had, and, and didn't have action scenes that dragged on for twenty minutes, or, and it didn't um, make me want to hurl, but, but looking at the visuals and. Yeah. It also didn't try and be purposefully. Yeah. Look, we're hip. The, fil the, 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 the film was messy, but I didn't think it was quite messy enough for to really become annoying. At least for me. Speed Racer, uh, Speed Racer did get under my skin, especially those two young characters. The thing, the, um, the monkey and the um, child. Uh, I will also say that uh, while I uh, uh, that it's really uh, okay. Uh, uh, Peter Travers said in his review. Uh, was something that I really got me thinking. Where it, uh, actually, let me get the quote so I can properly quote it. Uh, basically, Peter Travers. Uh, actually, um, Peter Travers uh, is a it used to be a fan of the of the Wachowskis, and even if it, even if he didn't like Cloud Atlas, he at least he appreciated it for at least trying to you know do something different. I mean, it failed, yeah. But uh, he's he he had to, he says that he still at least appreciates them for at least trying something that's you know um, something new something a little more okay. Let me just quickly okay Peter Travers review. <coughs> Sorry, that's his review. He coughed. He gave it one out one out of four stars. Oh, there's also another article here about Lana Wachowski. I'll bring it up in a moment. Okay. okay, here it is. At the end of his review said something that really I thought was interesting. Uh, where is it? He flies below this kind of... Uh... Okay, this kind of pandering 
special effects padding unnurtured, un unnurtured by humor or heart is what shifts Jupiter Ascending from a shambles to a fiasco. In an effort to win back audiences by lowering their standards and their daring, the Wachowskis went up where you never expected to find them creatively. On the ropes, which is which is true, because for as much as I don't like Carl Atlas, I will at least admit it was creative. It was it, it was it definitely it definitely had ideas that I didn't that you don't really see often, you know. Uh, so even though I enjoyed Jupiter Ascending, Ascending more than I did Cloud Atlas, I, 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 I still kind of appreciate Cloud Atlas more because at least it was trying something. This movie just feels like they were deliberately trying to you know just make a quick buck, you know. Yeah. Um, what if I told you that they're making a TV show? They are. Yeah, it's going to be on Netflix. It's called so, Sense Eight. So, so one more thing in common: the because I'm not Shyamalan is also making a TV show. <laughs> yeah. Um, apparently, it's called Sense Eight. They're creating it, and they're yeah, to your horror, they're writing it. Well, some of it, along with some other guy, and they're directing it as well, along with. The director of V for Vendetta and um, their co-director for Cloud Atlas. So basically, um, so so basically, the whole movie deal isn't working out for them right now. So they're trying to so they're going to try TV. Yes, coming out in like it says May or June, and it's apparently going to be about eight strangers from different cultures and parts of the world who, in the aftermath of a tragic death, suddenly find themselves mentally and emotionally connected. Okay, good joke. Good look at that, Wachowskis. An evolutionary leap of technological origin while trying to figure why this happened and what it means for the future of mankind, a mysterious and powerful man named Jonas, played by um, someone, I'm not going to bother looking through the list, will try to bring the eight together while another stranger called Mr. Whispers, <laughs> yes, Mr. Whispers, that's his name, and his organization will attempt to hunt them down to capture or assassinate them. Each episode will heavily feature one character and their story. It doesn't say how many episodes are planning to go for on this or anything. And they filmed it in quite a lot of places, so it's ambitious at least for a Netflix show. It's got America, it's got the UK, Germany, mm -hmm. South Korea, Iceland, Mexico, Kenya, and India. Yeah, uh, meanwhile, Wayward Pines, M. Night Shyamalan's TV show, still has no release date, so I can bring it up. But uh, yeah, uh, I keep, uh, well, we, we've got the Wachowski's film. Uh, done now. I keep now. I'll keep waiting for September when Shyamalan's next film comes out because much like the Wachowskis, the and that Shyamalan is a guilty pleasure of mine. But that's a story for another day. Um, the yeah, that I'll be sure to look up the TV show. Why not? Meanwhile, let me check this. Uh, oh, I, oh wait, it's nothing about the film. It's about her personal life. Okay, in that case, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it, how it, how exciting? In that yeah, case, I'll I'll actually I, I'm actually thinking of seeing this film. Is this new film, The Visit? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I like is that it's apparently a, an independent. Uh, well, film. it's it's being distributed by Universal, and it's only got like a five million dollar budget. That's just, uh, uh, but of course, uh, uh, I, uh, let's let's just hope uh, Shyamalan manages to at least put out something decent for once. A single parent mother that finds her family's lives go away after her two young children visit their grandparents. Oh boy. We're in for a treat. <laughs> hey, hey, this this is something we could do in September. Um, talk about this film. Oh yeah, definitely. When we do, when we, when... and also that he's making another film called Labor of Love. And that one Which brings he... back Bruce, Bruce Willis. Willis. Let's just hope that's the yeah, one. Yeah, because Bruce Willis has been making a hell of a lot of awesome career decisions as of late. <laughs> anyway, um, I think we've said pretty much everything we needed to say. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and our co-commentator hasn't showed up, so yeah. Anyway, that was our um, kind of modelled thoughts on Jupiter Ascending, just as modelled as the film itself. I still think it's nowhere near as bad as people are making it out to be. I And I think it's just boring. Indeed. I'd rather watch The Phantom Menace any day of the week. Anyway, um, <laughs> and yeah, that, and yeah, Pedro's shocked, I know. Anyway, that was um, our um, thoughts on Jupiter Ascending. If you haven't seen it, don't bother. Yeah, don't bother. You've seen this story. If you've been at all alive in the last 30 years, you you know this story. Do it. Do it. I well, yeah. Like, like I said, I saw big. I saw Big Hero Six later on. Go see it. Just just, just go watch that instead. I, it, unless you've already seen it, in which case, actually go watch it again. Yeah. Because at least you're giving your money to something that deserves it. Yeah. 
anyway, um, that's it. I will, and we'll see you next time we do one of these things. See you.